everyone, my name is Yuki Chan and welcome back to my let's play of Exogenesis Perils of Rebirth. So the last time we were here, EG had a broken radio and apparently we need to find a screwdriver to help him. And I don't, I've had this in my Sanctus biochip. And I don't know where I'm supposed to find this freaking screwdriver. I tried to kill it with the freaking katana that I found, but... Wait, if I had a screwdriver, I could open this up and find out what's wrong. Yeah, I, I would love to find a screwdriver. But nobody and their moms have a screwdriver. Yes, I'll come back soon if I figure out where the hell the screwdriver is. Is that what I think it is? You walked up to the car for a closer look at what appeared to be blood smeared on the car's rear end. He leaned in, leaned in to sniff the red dry liquid and confirm his suspicion. Suspicion? Oh my god. This is definitely blood. What happened here? Bar fight? The marks would make sense if you bashed someone's head against the back door. You stood next to the car to examine it. He noticed a somewhat shiny object inside the car. Ah! Screwdriver! <laughs> Thus, I should be able to face EG's radio with that screwdriver. Oh my god. I didn't even know that there was blood. I was just like literally clicking everywhere I could. Okay, well. Alright, hello? Screwdriver, screwdriver, screwdriver. I got a screwdriver. Let's do this. I should be ready to repair the radio. Hopefully it doesn't have missing transmitters, transistors, or a broken coil. Otherwise, finding replacement parts will be a pain in the butt. Because who the hell even choose? Yes. Found yourself a screwdriver? Let me see that. EG grabbed the screwdriver out of Yu's hand before Yu could react. EG examined the newfound tool he was now holding and dusted it off with his fingers. He tried to bend it to make sure it's in good condition. Perfect, as long as there are no broken parts. Why would you bend the only screwdriver we can find? What if you accidentally broke it? That's what I said. You didn't say anything. Uh, never mind. Are you sure you can handle it? Won't you need a magnifying glass or something? I have a few more decades before my eyesight can deteriorate, idiot. I asked in jest. There's probably no one who can rival Yiji's sharp vision. His weapon of choice allows him to attack from long range, and this is a fact he frequently uses to his advantage. He can shoot targets through nearly opaque... Opaque? Opaque? I know it's a... Uh, you know... Opaque... Whatever. Windows without even squinting. Whatever you say, a few minutes ago you were pulling your hair out over that radio. Only because I lacked the tool I needed, EG tapped the screwdriver's pointed end on the table as he looked at you. Now get lost, I don't need you supervising how I fix this thing. A shy performer as always. I just don't want any distractions. Fair enough. Honestly, I don't like having anyone over my shoulder either whenever I'm doing something. Their feelings should feel the same even for the always so dependable EG. Wait, so is he fixing it or what the hell's going on? Can I... Hello? Can I turn this on? I mean, I can look at it now, but what am I supposed to do? EG, another freeload of my R blood. Have you seen the blood on the car outside? That's something you want to clean up, right? Or did you perform some sort of blood ritual? What the hell are you talking about? Whose blood and where and how? Like I said, just outside on the car. You'll see when you leave this place and turn right. Whoever scraped himself there better clean up. The car you're talking about is all old and rusty. A wound affected, a wound infection waiting to happen. Doesn't look like Ichi knows anything about it. Hmm. Okay, well, that's pretty much everything that I can talk to him about. There's nothing I can do with the radio. I'm like, wait, what? What did I say? I have to turn it on first, otherwise it won't let me hear anything even if I beg. How do I turn it on? That's the... Hint? First things first, gotta turn on the radio. There, all powered up. Okay. Am I supposed to tune this? Now I have to adjust the volume to make sure you hear the broadcast. Volume's down here. The volume is set to low. I better turn it all the way up so we can hear broadcast better. We are ready for hand head bagging sounds now. Oh, head banging. Turn this now. Static. God, do I have to keep doing this until we find something? Static. Music. Music. Nice. Got a hand it to the nice people who still bother to operate music radio stations. More static. Sanctus station. 
Did you know that the pioneers respected and worshipped Lord Septimus? While it is true that Lord Septimus found his sanctus years after the pioneers went above ground, it is a matter of chicken and egg, really. Lord Septimus is still widely regarded as the sur as the savior who's made it possible to live above ground in the first place. Holy shit, is this Gurren Lagann where everybody just like lives under, you know, the ground? His Holiness built Novus Tokyo from the ground up too. Before Old Tokyo became inhabitable, it was a crazy jungle dominated by ravenous predators which fed on humans. Thanks to his divine architectural and social engineering genius, Lord Septimus single-handedly freed humanity from the abyssal underground shelters. Hail Lord Septimus. The same old station for Sanctus propaganda. You must be really bored if you listen to this. Well, you just made me read that entire thing, you asshole. More static. More static. Is this gonna be all static from now on? Anyone is ending this, please remember our sacrifice shall not be in vain. Means of the many blink, a few unyielding spirit, iron static. Ugh, did you hear that? I'm right next to you. What could have possibly happened to those people? Ichi did not answer as he solemnly stood there, seeping, seeping, seemingly stuck in deep thought. After a few long seconds, he only struggled as he looked square at the inquisitive, inquisitive you. Who knows? That's all you. That's all you're gonna say to me after thinking so hard. You did not say anything, nor did he think Ichi's query warranted a reply. He did have a gut feeling that the event struck Ichi to the core. Could have been a purely emotional response to a tragedy that kept Ichi mum. You tried to find an answer in his mind. So what am I supposed to do? Talk to him now? Nope. Not gonna talk to him. So what am I supposed to do? It's working now, obviously. We just used it. Um... Am I supposed to talk to these guys? Uh, oh. Maybe we're supposed to find out whose blood it is now. D-Boy is afraid of a little blood, ain't that grand? I'm sure he means we have nothing to do with whatever it is you're talking about. Maybe as a Yame, it would be her job to clean that up anyway. Good point, I might just do that. But what if everybody... Can I talk to everybody about blood? Don't even dare blame that on me just because I'm the guy with the knife. That's racist. Racist probably isn't the word you're looking for. Is that so? Why don't I carve a dictionary on your face then? Damn. <laughs> so violent. Blue, is it yours? Because you know your hand is like... No, I'm talking about your blood. Hey, there's a car outside with blood all over the rear end. Did you hurt yourself on the way here or something? Interesting. I've never heard of that setup before. What's the punchline? Um, I'm not trying to tell a joke here. There really is blood outside. It wasn't there last night. Strange, I haven't heard of anyone fighting inside or outside the Imperium recently. Or are you still settling, setting me up for a punchline? Nope, no punchlines. I had to ask just in case. Not him, huh? I wonder what that blood's all about. Um... Say, have you seen that blood-stained car outside? I'm pretty sure there was no blood there last night. Huh? Blood? I don't know anything about that. Where did you see it exactly? Exit and turn right. You can't miss it. Hmm, okay, I have to clean that up before Ichi gets mad. Thank you! No problem. How can anyone not notice that on the way here? If the incident that caused it was recent, someone from inside this bar must have heard. Oh god, am I supposed to go to the car? Go to the car. The blood is still there. Um, can I go back now? I'm assuming no. What am I su What? Welcome back. Jesus. Okay, can I- Hello? Uh, EG, I just uh, I just want to call it a day I just want us to be best buddies and why do you make it so hard I just want you to freaking talk to me and let's get the fuck out of here do I really want to talk about the Asian golden days This is the moment of truth. There is no turning back. After that long winded reminiscing, this is perfect time to dig deeper and see if I can change his mind about Miho and the Ark. He's saying there's nothing to his past, but that can't be right. I know he's keeping something from me, and I just need him to open up. What angle should I exploit? Alright, I got something now. Let's see. Uh. EG's motivations? 
Eiji's probably worried about what's gonna happen to the Imperium's regulars if he leaves, huh? Come to think of it, we don't even need to go that far back. You and I, we have past we'd rather leave behind. Yes, and while we're at it, let us agree that the dead stay dead. We both lost loved ones. Dead people become memories of the past, and that past will never catch up to the present. I'll reserve my opinion on that for later once Genius Kid tells me he was somehow wrong about Noah's Ark. Anyway, that's beside the point. The real issue here is more recent, the past two years to be exact. Really now? I don't know how you secured a place like this, but the last two years must have been real fruitful. The Empyrean ain't exactly a booming business. You could care less about that. Your real purpose of staying here... It's definitely not because you grew tired of the busy old days. You told me before that in movement there is life. The only difference between the living and the dead is that the living breathes and moves. So why are you staying in one place? The answer is simple. And that is... You found something more valuable than life. Turning your back on your philosophy is quite the statement. It is clear to me that you have found something more important than survival. This bar is more symbolic than anything. Did the door hit your head on the way here? No, but maybe you hit yours somewhere, because going from survival to servitude is a great change of mindset. You found something more valuable than life, or rather, you found a new meaning. Running a place where the distraught can forget their worries with booze is rather poetic, considering you're the type who'd go on treasure hunts for the benefit of your own small group. Something changed in Eiji's eyes that took you aback. This momentary pause allowed Eiji to inter interrupt Yu's oncoming monologue. What do you know about servitude? What? All your life, you never had to worry about anything other than Miho's survival and yours. I cannot call you selfish given that fact, but you've always lived in this small world in your head where there's only room for you and your little sister. Service is not as simple as doing something for someone else. Until you understand something this fact, you have no business telling me what's important in life and what isn't. Eiji, what the heck are you talking about? This is elementary, you. Someone whose motivation to go on is so straightforward can't possibly realize what it means to really be of service. This is something to do with your former nomad group, isn't there? Whatever. Come on, I'm not going to be satisfied with whatever. I don't know why your past as a nomad is such a touchy subject. Good thing I don't really care what satisfies you and what doesn't then. You don't like how I'm treating you? Door is open. E.G. That, that's probably as far as I can go with this line of questioning. Eiji still won't budge. Maybe you have no choice but to employ the special measures Midori was talking about. Ugh. Can I... You looked awfully uneasy listening to that radio broadcast. You must be seeing things. I can hear the butterflies fluttering in your stomach, Eiji. When was the last time you cleaned your ears? Must be the worms having a party in there. Oh, I see. So you felt nothing when you heard the distress call from someone taking his final breaths. The needs of the many, I think they said. Whoever we were listening to, they were part of a nomad group that got axed. But I guess that won't ring any bells, would it? What? You want me to acknowledge the commonly known fact that those things happen? Mission accomplished, you. Perfect. Now let's talk about how the exact same thing happened to your nomad group many years ago. Before you went off wandering on your own, some tragedy struck the pack you were leading, so you had to disperse. Or maybe you just couldn't take the pressure and let the frying pan. You- I know, I know. I can't possibly understand what you went through. I've never had to make tough decisions which determined whether people would live or die. Except, you know, that one time. It's completely different. Eiji's deadpan expression quickly turned sour. Going after the golden dream, it was a choice for all of us. We knew the risk and the payoff. We stood by our decision and paid dearly for it. Leading a nomad group isn't about getting everyone's opinion on the matter before moving forward. Far from it. Those guys on the radio, they wanted to sound heroic at the very end, but that's just a facade. When you're on the verge of the inevitable, possibly meaningless death, you find a way to convince yourself that you're not going to perish in vain. Meaningless, E.G.? They, they were making a sacrifice? Like hell they were. No one would choose to be left for dead if they had a say on the matter. You mean their deaths? Their deaths were not in vain. It was most probably a well-meaning calculated decision that decreed that decreed they'd be left behind. That's the only way the others could afford to move on and search for green pastures. There must have been dissent within the group, but they flew. They knew full well they couldn't go on the way they were. It's not like they just shredded skin like a snake to lose weight. To convince those who remain that they are not in danger of dying meaningless deaths, the sacrifices are set out on a mission. Maybe to retrieve supplies from a body trap stash or milk a high value target. 
But these thefts are no arbitrary. Throwing your life away just because someone said so. When it could have been someone else laid to rest. Your sacrifice means losses. Wait, what? Your sacrifice loses meaning when you realize it didn't have to be you. Unless you volunteered, which almost never happens. Life is taken away from you by those who choose to preserve theirs. It's messed up, and you have to convince yourself that you are facing the reaper for a good cause. Those who fail to do this go nuts and either kill themselves early or try to take someone else with them. You found himself speechless. It took a few moments of recomposing his thoughts before he could remind, remind himself of his objective. Eiji, you must have had to have make a lot of tough calls, huh? You have no idea, kid. You have no idea. Tell me, what happened to your old group? Did it disband? Did you really leave? Eiji had no words to return in. Aw, Eiji. Back then was no glory days of mine, I can tell you that. Once again, Eiji refused to budge. I shouldn't impress him any further. By the look of things, a little more discomfort and he's bound to kick me out again. Better play is safe, at least it's probably safe to assume the connection is there between Nomad Groups and his past. There may be less imposing way to learn about it. Oh my Jesus. I think I know why you'd rather close the door in the past. You say no big deal, but parting with your old crew was the most important moment of your life. It certainly wasn't another Tuesday. I think you're spouting nonsense because you have no idea what you're talking about. How about that? Believe it or not, I consulted one of Sanctus's top think tanks for this, so I'm inclined to agree that rumors about you being a former nomad leader are true. And given the challenges faced by nomad groups everywhere, you had to make scathing decisions. All the tough calls took their toll until you couldn't take it anymore. Eiji listened quietly, both disinterested and slight annoyance painted his face. I hate to say this, but everyone folds under pressure. Everyone. Eventually, you did, so you left your community in search for the meaning of life or whatever. That was right before we met. The rest is history. Revisionist history, more like it. I like to say history is written by the victors, but there are no winners in this conversation. We're both wasting our time. I suppose history can be written by nosy little pricks as well. Hmm, maybe the face stabbing, knife flipping, alcoholic salted make a wrong assessment? Imagine that. Damn it, EG, fudge! I just want you to go with me already! Ah! Oh. Everybody take a knife and just stab him in the butt right now because he's being a little dickhead. My goodness. Okay, well, that's what we're gonna be playing for today. I know it's another episode of just him talking and me talking, but this mother mofo does not want to go with me. So I'm gonna save here and we are going to hopefully get him to talk to us in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys a long time. Please support me by subscribing and sharing my videos if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay beautiful.